and welcome to today's lecture. Today we will look into integral ring extensions. That is a topic in commutative algebra that is important in its own right, but also has applications into algebraic geometry that we will briefly look into as well. So what is the idea? The idea is to mimic that of algebraic field extensions for rings that are not fields. So remember from your study of fields that a field extension is called algebraic if each element of the larger field is algebraic over the smaller field, meaning that it satisfies a polynomial equation over the smaller field. And you may assume that this polynomial is monic. Monic meaning that it has leading coefficient 1. So in fact you have a to the power n plus c n minus 1, some scalar times a to the power n minus 1, and so on equals zero. This is because your leading coefficient by definition is non-zero, hence it's invertible because you're in a field, so you can divide by it throughout. A consequence of this is that the field extension you get by adjoining a will be a finite field extension, because some power n of a will be a linear combination of lower powers of a. So what you get is a finite dimensional vector space over k. And this is nice, so we want to carry this over to ring extensions. So by a ring extension, we simply mean an injective ring homomorphism that we will always view as inclusion from a ring R to a ring R prime. And then the ring R prime is called an extension ring of R. Geometrically, if R is the coordinate ring of some affine variety X and R prime, is the coordinate ring of some affine variety x prime, then this inclusion homomorphism, because this is a contravariant construction, leads to a morphism of affine varieties in the opposite direction. We haven't discussed uh, whether or not this is surjective, but in some way you can visualize this as x prime sitting above x. And finiteness or algebraicity, whatever that means, will probably correspond to nice properties of this morphism. So this is our motivation to define and study an analog of algebraicity for ring extensions. So what do we do? Consider a ring extension R and R prime, and remember that rings for us are always unital and commutative. Uh, we call an element of R prime integral over R if it satisfies a monic polynomial equation. So we put this into the definition and it will be clear in a moment why this is important. If all elements of R prime are integral, we call R prime an integral extension ring over R. So the motivating example, at least for the name, is the case when we take R equals the ring of the integers, and R prime, its field of fractions, the ring, the field of rational numbers. So the statement here says that an element, a rational number, is integral over Z if and only if it is an integer, hence the name integral. And why is that? Well, you can write A equals, say, S divided by T with s and t co-prime integers with greatest common divisor 1, then if this element is integral, if it satisfies a monic polynomial, so if you have s divided by t to the power n plus c n minus 1, s divided by t to the power n minus 1, and so on, c0 equals Zero. Then you can solve for Sn, and what you get is t times something with z an integer. But this means that t divides s to the power n, so t divides s, but because and because they are co-prime, and again because they are co-prime, this means that t is a unit. So this means that t is equal to uh, unit. So in, in the case of the integers, it's plus or minus 1. But actually, this proof works for any unique factorization domain. And what this tells us 
is that no non-integer rational number can be a root of a monic integer polynomial. This is a fact that you perhaps know from earlier courses in algebra. Now, speaking of finiteness, recall from the previous example that this uh, would th this example somehow motivates why we require the polynomial to be monic. If we remove the requirement to be monic, then any rational number will satisfy uh, a polynomial equation, yeah, because this a equals s divided by t, if we have removed this monicity property, then we can simply take t a minus x equals zero, that is a polynomial um, equation in a with integer coefficients. But the point is here, it's there is a difference taking a, uh, a monic polynomial or not, because this t is in general not invertible. And what concerns finiteness, uh, if we do this, then all rational numbers will be um, in this alternative definition integral over the integers. And so then we will lose this property that being integral somehow implies some finiteness when adjoining that element. And in general, we can prove the following statement, that an extension ring is finite over R, if and only if it is generated as an R algebra by integral elements. What do we mean by finite? It is already finitely generated as an algebra, but what we mean by finite is finitely generated as an R module. This is stronger than being finitely generated as an R algebra. As an example, or rather a non-example, consider the polynomial ring, even in one variable. This is finitely generated as an algebra, the generator is t, but as an R module, it has the generators 1, t, t squared, t3, and so on, and so it's not finitely generated as a module. So this is a very strong statement about finiteness over our, of R prime. To prove this, we will need the Cayley-Hamilton theorem. You might know this from linear algebra, or you might have seen it in full generality, we will use it without proof, and the theorem says the following. If you have a finitely generated R module, so finitely generated as a module, of course, then any endomorphism of this R module satisfies some monic polynomial equation over R. This is what we will need for the proof of this theorem, but for later, let's record the additional part of the theorem that if in addition you know that the image of m sits inside some ideal times m, then you can take this polynomial p to have all its non-leading coefficients in the ideal j. The leading coefficient is 1 because the polynomial is monic. But okay, let's go to the proof of this proposition. So let us start in this direction. So assume that R prime is finite. So it's finitely generated as an R module. And assume it's generated by A1 to AN. Yeah, if it's already generated as an R module by these elements, then it is generated by them as an R algebra. When we use square brackets, we mean generated as an R algebra. So what we need to show is that all these ai are uh, integral, but we will show more. We will show that any a in R prime is integral. And so in fact, we are showing more than what the proposition say, says. We show that if this holds, then R prime is integral over R. It's an integral ring extension. Back to showing that A is integral. So now R prime is a finitely generated R module, we may use the Cayley-Hamilton theorem. And we will apply it to the following endomorphism, 
f from r prime to r prime, which is simply obtained by multiplying by a. So Cayley Hamilton, they tell us that we have f to the power m plus c m minus one f to the power m minus one. So c zero and so on equals zero. So we have a monic polynomial uh, in this f, and now f to the power k is just composition of f with itself k times. So this is an equality of linear maps on R prime, and we can apply them to the element one in R prime. And so we get, well, f applied m times simply multiplies by a m times. So if we apply this to the unit, we will get a to the power m and same here and so on. So we get a monic polynomial in a and this proves that a is integral. So all elements of uh, our prime are integral. In the other direction, the proof is simpler because assume that our prime is generated in such form, meaning that assume that our prime is r a1 to a n, then our prime is the set of r linear combinations of products of the form a i to the power m i. So r is generated, r prime is generated as an r module by these monomials. But then because each a i is integral, we can truncate. What does this mean? This means that we can stop after a finite specific m i for each a i. So the uh, module r prime is generated by only finitely many of these products already, and this proves that it is finite. So if the ring r prime is finite, then it is integral, and if it's generated by integral elements, then it is finite. Let's look at some examples.